Not all the stories told in East London were as well known as those of the Pepco 3 and the Craddock 4, but their accounts were no less disturbing. Nortlea Mohapi was Steve Biko's secretary. Her husband, Mapetla, was killed in police cells. After the death of Mapetla, I was full of hate. I was full of hatred that can never be accounted. I was hating anybody who was police. I hated them for the oppression. Those were the people who were enforcing apartheid laws on us. They wanted us not to have rights, even the children. When you speak to them, you have to tell them, these are the people who oppressed us. Tony Lillian Mazwai's son, Sepiwe Hamlet Mazwai, was killed by security forces in 1988. The police put restrictions on his funeral. Terrorist. I was informed that my son was a well-trained guerrilla. So people who were to be at the funeral had to be limited to only 200. Only the reverend. No freedom songs. We don't want any freedom songs. No speeches. No speeches. Is it the police? Yes, the police. It was like a war. There was a convoy with police and soldiers. The name Flakplas came up again on Wednesday. Siswe Kondile was a young ANC activist who was arrested in June 1981. Former Flakplas commander Dirk Kutsia said in 1989 that Kondile tried to escape and injured his head when he jumped through a window. General Nick van Rensburg, who obtained a court interdict against another Truth Commission witness this week, ordered that Kondile be killed because the police could not afford another Steve Biko scandal. Kondile was taken to Kumati Poort and burnt to death. Dirk Kutsia testifies that they took him to this doctor who said what I've already said about the Steve Biko case, that they took him to Komati Port to get this poison, where they gave him poison drops. But he didn't die immediately from these poison drops. So some, somebody had to shoot him, so, and then he died. Well, Dekusia further goes on to say that when he died, they put his body on a pile of wood with a, a tire, and near the Komati Port River at night, where it took them nine hours to burn his body. And Dekutia further says that whilst they were burning his body, the flesh was smelling good, and they were having beers at that time. So it was like a bride to them, according to Dekutia. And as a mother, I feel that no matter whether it was politics fighting for the land, no matter who, I don't think he deserved all that uh, treatment. I feel it was grossly inhuman. I feel if they could have killed him and gave us the body or left it in the field there, I feel that this was tantamount to cannibalism or even satanism. For nine years, the ANC maintained that Sizwe Kondile was a spy.